what happened like in a previous generations where there was so much programming about work hard, get married, raise the kids, you know, have sex, you know, maybe like once on Sunday. Uh, there were, I mean, in these groups, when people were opening up about uh, their what was happening in the bedroom and how they were relating to each other, there was one guy in a group that I remember he said that his wife, you know, said, okay, it's a duty to have sex. So every Sunday she would turn her back, left, left the door open and was allowed to like kind of, you know, poke at her from behind. And that was kind of their sex life for, for years. <laughs> Welcome to Old God Talks to Me, a podcast dedicated to helping guys create kick-ass lives for themselves and those that they love. Ladies, if you want to know what your guy is thinking, this podcast is for women too. Each week, a special guest helps you create that life you've imagined. We talk anti-aging medicine, personal growth, relationships and hot sex. Yeah, you hear me, getting laid more frequently, other guy vices, and topics that many don't want to talk about but need to. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean you have to be old. Don't want to miss anything? Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review this podcast. And be sure to go to www.thestandard.academy forward slash magazine and grab a free copy of our new digital magazine, The Standard Academy, where we talk about erogenous zones, growing hair back, and other things that will help you create that kick-ass life. Now get ready to listen up and share with friends. This is Orsi, official old guy from oldguytalkstome.com, a podcast dedicated to helping older guys create, well, kick-ass lives for themselves and those that they love. And part of that kick-ass life is, well, you got it, sex. Yeah, we say it, sex. Uh, it has a nice sound to it, too. And today, my guest is Julia Kovacs, and uh, she is the, the uh, well, she's kind of a, a sex coach, a re relationships coach. And uh, she has a, a soul sexy life is her website. Those those uh, her websites are going to be in the uh, in the show notes as well as how to get a hold of her on social media. So you don't have to worry about writing it down. It's right there in the in the, uh, in the uh, uh, program notes. So uh, Julia, uh, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's dedicated to empowering everyone to live life orgasmically. She accomplishes by working with men and women individually and in groups to overcome their past conditioning related to intimacy. The goal is to teach people how to live an orgasmic life each moment of their waking hour. Julia works to change the paradigms of the public's perception of sex evolving from shameful junk sex to sacred gourmet sex. As an intimacy coach, she will give you hands-on training and gently guide you through your own or couple's sexual blocks to open the door to your bliss. That's right, bliss. There you go. That's a, that's a nice word, bliss. It's, it's one of those words that, that, that sounds like what it means uh, a few yes. in, mm -hmm. in the English language. So, uh, Julia, thank you. Thanks for coming in. I've been looking forward to this interview for a while. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, how did you, uh, and, and we're, we're really talking about, you know, we're going to talk about sex for uh, people as they get older and, you know, lots of things change and we, we're going to talk about that. But before we get into the specifics of that, how did you get into this space? Wow. Yeah. Um, well, uh, the hard way um, through my own frustration and having turned 50 and realized that something there's seriously wrong uh, with the way I uh, relate to men, the way I live my life. I had a skin issue, weight issue. Um, it's the <laughs> unfucked woman uh, issue that I've come to here at one point and I'm like wow is that a thing and once you see it it's almost hard not to see it and it sounds you know sounds very crude but unfucked meaning unloved and someone who has not opened up her sexuality and is not comfortable with her sexuality and there are so many women and men 
are in that category because of the way we grew up, uh, a lot of religious um, conditioning from a very early age on. And then we set on the lives without any kind of education or, or, or positive um, encouragement of now you're an adult and you're supposed to be sexual and this is supposed to be fun. No, it's all about fear and you're going to get pregnant and you got to STDs and he's going to take advantage of you and all of that mind games are going on that prohibited most of us in our young age to actually accept that we are sexual beings. Um, we get hungry, we get horny. And uh, not until much later in my life, I discovered that, wow, actually, you can think about this, you can talk about this, you can get educated about this, and you can practice this and research this. And so at 50, when I discovered that I probably have not had an orgasm, um, because my orgasm has really changed after that, uh, I realized, wow, if I hadn't had it, how many millions of women haven't had it? And I had, I had two Italian husbands and, you know, I've uh, had uh, in my youth an active and I thought, you know, really awesome lovers. Uh, and I had no idea how much I was shut down. And I, it took me um, many years to come to where I am now. Uh, but I realized that, wow, there are so many people around me. And they started asking me, well, what did you do? What did you do? How did you do it? And, uh, and I realized, well, I can create a shortcut for them. And it, it doesn't have to be a 20-year-old <laughs> uh, reading sure. all the books, you know, and all that. So that's kind of how that happened. Yeah. So you, you, you mentioned the, the age of 50 a couple of times. What was, uh, what, was, what was happening there for you? At age what was happening is that, is that I, I was a single mom. I was married to an Italian guy and, very, and then moved back to Canada. And I remained pregnant with a two-year-old um, about, well, at the time, it was about 20, 20 years before that. So for these 20 years, I just was a, a dedicated single mom. Uh, and then for first six years of that, uh, I was like, fuck men, screw them. I don't want to see them. I don't want to ever hear from them. I have a seriously wrong way of picking men. They are from Mars. We are from Venus. We're never going to get along. And then, and then slowly, uh, I discovered that that behavior was to protect myself and also understanding that now I have to focus on motherhood and sexuality somehow needs to be in a separate category that I cannot uh, deal with uh, or relation, even relating to a man because now I have to focus on raising children. And in that process, I abandoned myself as a woman. I became a mother, a chauffeur and a cook. And uh, although I loved my children, I was also a very angry and resentful person for how my whole uh, marriage and divorce and then being in this situation that I found myself in and uh, and did not give myself permission to uh, look inward. I figured there was so much to do outward, taking care of the children, that I had no time whatsoever to actually contemplate uh, other parts of myself. And, and I worked as a tour guide and a teacher, and I just got really, really burned out with the go, do, go, do, go, do. Uh, and um, I had a boyfriend at the time, and also uh, TED Talks and, and lots of other, you know, interesting things were coming online. And um, as I was a teacher, and at lunchtime, I would listen to something on, on the internet while I was having my lunch and I discovered his TED Talks uh, on, um, it was Nicole Didon uh, from One Taste and it talks about the Western woman, the plague of the Western woman who is hungry on the inside. They feed themselves with food in order to, in order to uh, quench this, this, this feeling of emptiness and void. And that emptiness and void, it comes from the fact that they are not receiving enough love 
and and sensuality in their body and so body, their body is kind of just craving something as and they don't know what it is so it's the mantra of the western woman is over overworked and underfucked and i'm like wow okay i think that's me and um and my and i was burned out of my job i left my job my kids were i think the turning point was that my kids were ter- were growing up and they became teenagers and then all of a sudden i was faced with the reality it's like wow, what about me now? Now I, I have to look at myself and how do I want to conduct the rest of uh, my life beyond being a mother? And yeah. uh, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah I think a, a, a lot of times, um, and this happens, to, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine uh, how hard it is to raise kids as a single mom. It's, 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 it's a challenge when you have two parents and as a, as a single mom, it's, 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 it's not twice as hard. It's actually, you know, exponentially harder because you, you, you have to do everything. Um, but one of the things that, that we've, uh, I've discovered with talking with men is that uh, a lot of times when, even if you have two parents, that the, the, the entry of kids into that relationship with a couple uh, really starts to affect intimacy. Uh, Absolutely. You know, you know, because, you know, and, and let's face it, you know, it, you know there's, there's exceptions to this, but in, uh, at, at this time, um, 75% of the burden of raising the kids or more uh, falls on the woman. But that's just, that is just, that is just, that, that is just yeah. a reality. You can argue all yeah. you want about, you know, sexual roles and all that shit. I don't want to get into that. But, but the reality of this it does. And so, you know, I can understand that, a woman is tired. She's beat up. Uh, she just wants to be. She just wants some peace and quiet, and it, and it affects couples uh, in their way. But um, let's talk about some things uh, that uh, about older people. Uh, let's talk about menopause and and and, uh, and how that affects uh, uh, couples and their, and their sensuality and intimacy. Okay, well, that's baby. So yes, yeah, so that also happened at the time as well. And, um, and I started to just um, go uh, into groups and, and, and started to talk about this and then also found out as it turning into, you know, the menopausal years that there is no path. And, and we were told this story that, oh, you know, menopause, your hormones will change. You're not going to want to have sex anymore. And same goes for the guys. And they're just not going to, you know, be sexually that interested anymore. My own parents were saying, oh, you'll see, after 60, it's all just downhill and it's just as well. And that was the overwhelming message that I got is that, well, don't worry about it now because it's just going to all go downhill from now. <laughs> and for women, you know, and then, and then uh, that's actually a lie. Uh, and, uh, and I think because we live longer and we have way more information now on our hands, uh, we can verify that that's an absolute lie. Um, and I don't know, you know, if what happened like in a previous generations, whether there was so much programming about work hard, get married, raise the kids, you know, have sex, you know, maybe like once on Sunday. Uh, there were, I mean, in these groups, when people were opening up about uh, their what was happening in the bedroom and how they were relating to each other. There was one guy in a group that I remember he said that his wife, you know, said, okay, it's a duty to have sex. So every Sunday she would turn her back, left the door open and was allowed to like kind of, you know, poke at her from behind. And that was kind of their sex life for, for years. <laughs> and, you know, mer- and then, mer- you know mer- mercy, mercy, mercy sex is never mercy particularly good. Is- yeah, exactly. Mercy sex, right? And then, and then, you know, and then, oh, I'm in a pause, so I don't have to have sex with you anymore. You know, like as the door, the door closed, and that was the message that I got overwhelmingly. And that this is something, oh, that just men bother the women with, and women have to put up with. And I had no idea that actually it's something that women not only can but but do want. Uh, the connection and the intimacy. Now, there's lots of con- lots of things that 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 are coming into this. You know, with the with the menopause, there's also, you know, there's also high hygiene and attraction and all. You know, because I also heard a lot of that. It's like, oh, uh, you know, like man, it's their hygiene and they're not attractive anymore after a certain age and stuff. So, you know, there has to be a lot of self awareness 
you know, with my partner, yeah. we say we they have a commitment to keep to keep ourselves fuckable, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that, you that, know, that goes for both. That that goes for Ben too. Both, uh, both right? Yeah, it's yeah. For I both. mean, I mean, so yeah. I, I I mean, you know, uh, guys, uh, if if you're not manscaping, you're you're right. You're, you're you're basically right. screwing yourself. Uh, I, right. I mean, that's just you know, that's basic number one. Do you need accountability? Are you looking to change the course of your life but have failed to keep on track? Too often we take in information and fail to act. Do you need an accountability program to stay the course? Then go to www.thestandard.academy and find out about my accountability program that goes with my course that helps you find out what you want, why you want it, and how to get it. The accountability program keeps you on track to get results. Smell good, be clean, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, I mean, all of those things are just natural. And I think, especially if you live together with someone for so long, we let those things go. And I think we need to keep it attractive. So, so you know, with menopause, because women are, are, are going through lots of uh, internal conflicts and readjusting of their hormones as well. Uh, it is it is a is it a tricky part and it's a very tricky part for men because there's not only not enough information I think that it's getting better now not only enough information on how to deal with menopause what are actually the real real symptoms and not real symptoms but and then how but it's also how to then educate the, our partners or men around us how to deal with us I've seen men who were said oh my god my my wife became and I, I don't even know what to say anymore I have to stay away and just stay away and that is not a good way to approach no, this no. so so I think we're just so uneducated we are like children when it comes to any of these serious adult issues yeah so just for for all our listeners here to know uh, I've done several interviews with uh, uh, physicians on uh, menopause and hormone replacements and and vaginal de de deterioration and vaginal rejuvenation. Right. If you sort of scroll to the subject, you, you can see those. But there, there's there's lots of there, there's uh, there's lots of ways to to deal with this. And also for, for men, uh, you know, I talk a lot. I also have lots of interviews. I talk about testosterone. And my mm -hmm. myself personally, I have been on testosterone for over twenty five years. Twenty five uh, years, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm talking about optimized uh, because it's, it's it's hard to find doctors that will do that for you. Uh, but I've so, been so I've when been, you mean when you mean yeah. optimized, like what do you mean, like how much how much of a level? Well, I don't really discuss levels here. <laughs> on my okay, program. okay, 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 okay. But sorry. but 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 no, and, that, and that's fine. But if you if you find a good functional medicine doctor or anti aging doctors, uh, they're gonna they they actually titrate you to how you feel. Not necessarily wow. a level, but how do you feel? And I feel great. I mean, at 70, I feel great. And I do things that somebody who's 70 should not be doing and not be thinking. Uh, so I would encourage you, you know, uh, our listeners also look at, so there's like seven, there's about five or six uh, interviews about but testosterone on the website that we go. The reason, the reason why. Reason why I was asking about the optimizing because my boyfriend has been doing it and he's 64 and he's been doing it for a few years and so he's just re really getting to the to the level that he used to be. So that's yeah, kind yeah. of yeah. So just what yeah. you have lost and uh, right. and right and and uh, and and yeah. And I think that's that's another information that needs to get out there. But I'm glad that yeah. uh, that you are getting that information out there because that's also yeah. absolutely part of the picture. The hormones are a big part of the picture. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and also the thing that affects the uh, is erectile dysfunction. Uh, yes, absolutely. Which, which 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 was which I had an issue with for for a while. We got that taken care of, and uh, again, we have some art. Uh, we have some interviews about ED and some uh, mm -hmm. some treatments that's that's available out there for it. Um, okay, so you have a couple, and they uh, lose their uh, intimacy, their sensuality. Uh, what happens if they don't do anything? Well. It's like the old adage, you don't use it, you lose it. That's mm. what happens. And 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 it you become disconnected from each other slowly. And I've seen yeah. it seen this over and over. It is an effort. So 
So intimacy uh, is we need to treat it like it like we need we treat uh, food <laughs> uh, sure. or ex or exercise, you know, or a garden. Uh, I think people have the assumption. Well, you know, we grew up on Hollywood movies, and you know, they got get, they got to the end of the story, and then you know, and there is nothing afterwards, and and that there's some 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 stories, very very superficial way of how you know we handle relationships after after marriage. So there's no models out there. We don't actually we are we don't go into people's bedrooms and tell them say this, don't say that, do this, don't do that. We just kind of wing it. And and if we wing it based on what we learned from our parents, uh, sometimes that's not a good way. And also, this is a this is a learned skill. You know, it's a learned oh, skill. Absolutely. And, you know, right. And because it happens behind closed doors with two people, it's you and I, and we are both relying and uh, and and defaulting to our, you know, to our our state. Uh, yeah. what happened earlier and you know and and we don't bring in it's like okay actually you know like focus consciously let's not talk about this let's just you know ask questions that really matter and spend actually yeah. focus time yeah. with each other and, and so that... you have to you have to work on it and we don't have the right questions to ask it's like, how was your day you know whatever it's like you know very uninteresting questions that's why dinner tables are so boring for kids as well whereas you can ask like really interested questions like how did you feel today when I said this or when I you know made this meal and then you didn't say anything or whatever you know like just look just things about bring the other person out and then connect to each other and it happens great sex doesn't happen in that moment that's also a Hollywood you know misconception that oh you know sure, he's just yeah. gonna look at you you know and throw you to the wall and now it's all happening no you plan on it you build it you be you be nice to each other for a week before that. You know, I mean, well, you know, yeah, there's a How, process. Guy, yeah, guy. Uh, uh, well, this happens both sides, guys and women. Uh, but uh, people stop flirting with each other. <laughs> yes, they 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 they, they, they don't. It, it's not fun, and they don't flirt. And they uh, for for guys, in order to have, I think, uh, to have a a, a vibrance. Uh, life of, of sexual life of, of vibrant intimacy uh, you have to really have a mindset of flirting and also kind of being part of being a man is being on the hunt all the time and not, not right. to say not, not, to, not right. to say that you're on, not, not that you're you know you're you're, you're you know you're stalking your, your significant other but you, you have to you have to bring an energy to it you, you can't yeah, be energy of play, and playful a playful energy exactly. right yeah, that is yeah. easy. It, that's a that's an invitation. You know, it's like you know the cat cat calls and you know pinching the butt or something like that. You know, had gotten such a bad name. And yes, from strangers on the street, it is. But when it's your partner, it's like make you feel like that. You know that he's noticing you, that he's attracted to you, uh, and then you can play with it. And unfortunately, yeah. if you have been together for a long time and you didn't have playfulness. <laughs> In your intimacy, then it feels very weird to pick it up after thirty, or, you know, thirty years. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Well, I, yeah, yeah, but you have to start somewhere. And, and, and yeah, and, you do. And, and, yeah, yeah. You, it, it's not like yeah. you're going to be like where you were if you have if you haven't been doing that for a while. And uh, you know, the other the other thing I was going to say is that a lot of people don't prepare for when the kids leave the house. No when they're kidding. empty nester, and and that's where I, I think all. that's where a lot of divorces happen. Because all of a sudden right. they're well, okay. There's just the two of you. You know the kids are gone. You're right. not driving all over town. Blah blah blah. And, yeah. and so we actually, my wife and I plan for our empty nesting days. Uh, we start playing about three or four years uh, nice. before our kids kids went off to college. And and it was it was it was it wasn't just it wasn't just sensual. It was also professionally. You know, go, her going back yeah. to the workforce, all sorts of things yeah. uh, going on. So okay, so we've been talking about a lot about about problems here. So I want to switch gears a little bit here because I don't want to be all gloom and doom here in the first 25 minutes and, and have people throwing their hands up and saying, oh, well, I might as well just go right. off in the corner right. and, and masturbate by myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what makes you a Renaissance woman? <laughs> well, um, well, I reinvented, not reinvented, I found my, myself uh, after 
you know, uh, decades of the traditional roles of not just the traditional role of being a mother and, and you know, and a stay-at-home mom. I wasn't. I was also a career woman. So I was, you know, all the typical women of, the, of, of my generation, educated, um, had two careers, traveled to, you know, 36 countries, um, and, you know, very interested in, in all kinds of things. Um, and, you know, I speak a number of languages. Uh, and, and so it's, it's, I've, I've, uh, I've tried to cover as much as possible what life had to offer to me. Uh, and, 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 I, and I still felt very dissatisfied with everything that I found out there because I didn't connect to myself. Um, and so I think, you know, the Renaissance, when it started, was basically moving away from uh, everything happens after life and then looking again at nature and the nature of humanity itself. And that was a brand new perspective. I think we are, look, we are in, a, in an age right now where artificial intelligence is going to completely shift who we are as humans. And in the last few decades, we have, um, well, um, I was going to say we have abandoned, uh, you, you know, common sense and, and, and looking at what humanity is. But I think it happened much earlier than that. I think what's happening lately that we are deeply questioning uh, our values um, and we are facing some serious existential threats. Uh, not that I want to bring up more serious problems, but it's it, and and therefore I I felt in my body that before I leave this planet, I need to know who I am as a human and as a person and as a woman. And thank God to the internet, I think that's what is is helpful for us to to create this renaissance. We are now uh, able to get information about us, like about our body, how it works, uh, and have a much broader understanding other than just what came out of the TV or from friends or church, um, and which was just one point of view. And, uh, and, and we are incredibly complex um, and very interesting creatures on this planet. <laughs> um, we are both matter and light, and we are transmuting all of that together. And our bodies are like computer programs. They hold so much information from our past, uh, from currently, from our environment. We pick up a whole lot of stuff in our bodies. We have feelings. We respond. Um, our, our organs are, are incredibly working in harmony. And I think we need to be aware of all of that, how powerful of an organism we are. And not just our brain, but our heart. Our, now there's gut health, you know, like you're talking about sexual health. All of these areas that have been abandoned because we didn't even think about it. You just get sick, you get, you know, uh, go to the hospital and, you know, and, and you know, kind of your life is over. We have been running this human body, I, I assume, on a 10% on a ability. We are so capable of so much more. And, I, and we need to know that and need to know how incredible uh, our bodies are. And it can transform into anything you want it to. Thank you for joining Dr. Orrest and his incredible guest. Like what you heard and learned? Then be sure to do three things. One, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Two, share this with someone who may need to hear it. Three, leave a review and rate this podcast. Opt in at www.thestandard.academy forward slash magazine and get our free digital magazine with savings, articles, and deeper dives into cool controversy. Be the guy who takes action. Without action, you're not going to get the results you want. Thank you again, and make it a great day.